Here we have the 2020 Ford Edge, and there are only mild changes for the 2020 model. But for a two row SUV, is this one worthy of your money? In this video, you can expect us to take a look at the exterior, the cargo space, pop the hood, and go for a test drive and check everything out on the inside. And honestly, this has been a little bit more enjoyable and practical than I was expecting. Let's get started. To take a quick look at the exterior details, you're gonna range trim levels from the SE SEL Titanium to the top end ST. And this particular model is the Titanium with the Elite package, so it is more luxurious than the other models. And as we start right up front, this was revised for 2019 and it remains the same for 2020 for the most part up front here. Kind of have a little bit of chrome inserts in that grill, some chrome inserts down below for our titanium model. You got full LED headlights. So you've got the LED daytime running light, high and low beams, the blinker, LED fog lights as well. And these headlights do look pretty nice at night. They do a good job as well. And they're even adaptive available with this titanium and ST pack and the ST trim. And this particular color is the star white paint. It's a premium color and there are actually six different paint colors that are new for 2020. Now the wheels are gonna range a little bit depending on the trim level, starting at 18 inch on the SE or SEL, 19 inch on most titaniums. But these are the 20 inches with our Elite package and the ST can get all the way up to 21 inch wheels. And another thing that you'll notice is that on the side body you have the chrome insert at the bottom. That's another thing that you get with this Elite package on this titanium. And then the chrome inserts on the door handle as well. So you don't get chrome door handles, but you get chrome inserts. So it's a little bit more luxurious looking than some models. Plus, these mirrors have blinkers in them, blind spot indicators in them. They're also heated, and the driver's side is automatic dimming on our model. Another thing for 2020 that is new is that the base model can give you the roof rails up top. We don't have ours equipped with those, but the SE can now give that to you. And dimensionally, the Ford Edge is 189 inches long, so it slots perfectly in between the Escape and the Explorer, and it'll give you eight inches of ground clearance. Then in the back of the Escape, you have kind of some black trim running across with the chrome insert and the body color bumper. A nice finish on this rear end, titanium badge, LED taillights, and an LED blinker as well. Plus, don't forget the double exhaust tips. Now, there are a number of different ways you can open up the cargo area. You can touch a touchpad under there, open it from the inside, or optional on the SEL trim, you can swipe your foot underneath and get the foot activated lift gate. Now let's take a quick dive into this cargo area. So I'm actually a fan of this cargo area, even though it's not super massive, it is spacious. A couple reasons why. First of all, you can put a tonneau cover in here. There's kind of a spot on each side. You have a hook on each side that could be good for groceries. You even have an extra little cubby right here, whatever you want to put in there. Check it out, a 12 volt power outlet. You can power fold the seats. So watch, power folding in this class is rare. You can power fold and power fold down and you get a little bit of a ridge like a little bit of a ramp going up if you have pets or anything back here that might be annoying but you get over 70 cubic feet with everything folded down so it's a nice spacious area plus you got a cargo light over there like i said another hook over there and then underneath you get a spare tire and some extra cubby area where i could put some um I always keep a little tire inflator with me and some jumper cables and you got room for all that under here. And then when you're all done, just swipe your foot under there again and it'll close for you. So hands-free open and close. Under here, there are no changes for the 2020 model. You still get two different engine options, but one of them's only on the ST trim. No matter what, you're gonna be stuck with turbos. There's no naturally aspirated engines, which I wish that there was at least available. But under here, we get a two liter four cylinder turbo, 250 horsepower and 275 pound feet of torque. That's not too bad for this size of a vehicle. The ST is the sporty one that can give you up to 380 pound feet of torque. The Edge gives you an eight speed transmission instead of the 10 speed that you see from corporate Ford and some other vehicles. And unlike the brand new Explorer, the Edge is front wheel drive first and then all wheel drive optional. The Explorer is actually rear wheel drive based. Miles per gallon will vary a little bit. Our front wheel drive models rated at 22 city and 29 highway 
and then you drop just a bit with all-wheel drive and on my highway MPG test I was able to get just over 30 so that's not too bad. I'm surprised to see that we don't get a hood insulator unless for some reason this one was removed but inside you don't really get a lot of powertrain noise and I'll talk about what it's like to drive this turbo a little bit later. Ford gives us the intelligent key access pretty large Ford key fob that is typical Remote start is optional on the SEL or standard on the upper trims and you can open up your lift gate. One nice thing is that we have that option for the back doors as well. Sometimes it's only for the front door, but you can lock it by pressing the lines right there or just stick your hand behind there. And another nice thing is that the SEL trim and higher gives us the touchpad right here, the keyless touchpad. So you can set your own specific code to get into the vehicle. One nice thing about the Ford Edge is that it's at a really nice height, so it's easy to get in and out if you have mobility issues. The base SE is gonna give you just six-way manual cloth seats. The SEL will bump it up to synthetic leather, 10-way power adjustable seats. And then in our top Titanium Elite, we get the entry exit system. So you can have it programmed to where the seat and the steering wheel will move to your preferred memory setting. In addition to that, we get these perforated, heated, and cooled leather seats that are 10-way power adjustable, including their memory settings with two-way lumbar support. These seats are very comfortable. They're really soft, they're plush, they're supportive without being over-bolstered. And one thing that I love about Ford is that they give you adjustable headrests. So a lot of cars, new cars, tend to have their headrests be way too aggressive, but you can move Ford's back, which is really nice. In addition to that, we get a leather wrapped heated steering wheel that is also power adjustable as you saw. Another note that I wanna make is that most of the time, passenger seats on these non-luxury brands don't get lumbar support or don't get height adjustment, but you actually get all of the regular adjustments with this Ford Edge. So you can lift your seat bottom, you can adjust the height and lumbar support, so that is great. Now as we take a look at the interior, this is in my opinion the absolute weakest point of the Ford Edge. So starting over on the door, you do still get nice materials up above as you'd expect in this price. Nice interior material right here, nice soft armrest, but it gets really skinny back here to where it's not all that helpful. Only the front two windows are the automatic one touch, but you do have a bottle holder and some nice storage cubby right there. Ford steering wheel looks a little bit jumbled and dated as well. Now I'm just going to point these things out. I'm not necessarily complaining. I'm just pointing them out in comparison to some of the newest vehicles. Now the buttons work just fine. You have pretty much everything you need except the top part of each of these pads, which you use for two different displays up there, are a little bit annoying to get the top buttons because it's slanted away from you. But the steering wheel is comfortable to hold on to. It's heated and leather wrapped and you have rain sensing windshield wipers here. This is one area where Ford is a little bit behind. Um, you have two 4.2 inch displays instead of one big display or one whole digital display and then the interior display or the interior uh, speedometer right there. The display on the left shows you basically kind of your usual trip computer stuff. You can have a digital tachometer on there as well. You can control some different uh, settings on here like your driver assist settings or some door and lock settings as well. On the right you get more basic information. You have to use a different touchpad on the steering wheel though which is a little bit annoying but you do have some split information. Aside from some of the display issues like this one right here and the overall really dated cheap plasticky look of the center console, Ford has some great storage practical areas. So first of all I like this area up above. It's actually rubber lined so you can throw some stuff up there. It won't slide around. The dash is kind of a softer material. I don't ever really care about that, but I haven't noticed any rattles either. And then you've got the Sync 3 system. It's an eight inch screen. It gives you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's a little bit delayed, but it still gives you a lot of information um, and some different customizable settings, including ambient lights. Now Ford gives you a camera button and you might think you get a surround vision camera, but it's just front and back. So if you push that button, you can see in front of you, you can see kind of a wide view in front or in reverse, you can see your backup camera, which is, which does work pretty well with dynamic lines and a hitch line. I wish that we had more physical buttons, even though buttons are starting to get outdated, but wish we had more physical buttons up here. Uh, not a huge deal, but down below you get a volume knob. You do not get a tuning knob, but you got a tuning button and a seek button over here. The climate controls do look dated. You do have dual zone climate control, which is now new for 2020, standard even on the base model. It used to be optional. 
cooled and heated seats and these ventilated seats have actually worked really well my butt actually did get a little bit cold another new feature is that for 2019 ford got rid of the cd player on the lower trims and now for 2020 the top titanium and st no longer have a cd player either down here there's a really large storage area with wireless charging inside of there optional on the sel trim and standard here a couple charging ports you can close it off but it's a really big storage area you've got this turn dial shifter it doesn't take up as much space it works as for sport mode quick complaint here another complaint is that i left it the way it was hopefully you can see those swirl marks and scratches and just the piano black on these interiors just can constantly get scratches and scuffs and swirls and all of that but electronic parking brake there is no brake hold but you have an electronic parking brake turn off your auto stop start front and rear parking sonar and actual park assist to help you park like i said with cubbies so aside from that one you've got this one right here good for a wallet or a phone or whatever good size cup holders fits my bottle just fine and then another little cubby right in front of there where you can shove whatever you want the armrest is nice and soft and it's far enough forward it does not move forward and backwards but you can lift it up and have one tier or you can have two tiers with the 12 volt power outlet i thought that this would automatically be able to lift up like a two different tiered lift option but i don't believe it does Another nice note is that on the passenger side, you've got a 12 volt power outlet there and then both driver and passenger can access that little hidden storage bin. So lots of cubby space in here. And then Ford gives you a locking glove box. That's pretty good size. One change for 2020 is that the automatic dimming mirror is no longer available on the base model. They actually got rid of that. But we get that and we get garage controls up above and we have a sunglass holder. We also have LED interior lighting. And to top it off, we get this panoramic Vista roof. This large portion opens up for the sunroof. And then you've got the window all the way back over the second row. And this is optional all the way down to the SEL trim. And then at night, this titanium gives us ambient lighting in the cup holders by our footwells, including illuminated front door sill scuff plates. Now sitting behind myself at five foot nine, I've got really good knee space and really good foot space and the passenger seat, there's even more room. I could scoot this seat up more and you can have a lot of overall space. These back seats are soft and comfortable, just like the front row seat. You get the center folding armrest with cup holders. You have AC vents, heated seats, a storage bin, and a 12 volt power outlet and three prong outlet. Ford didn't skimp out on materials. You have the same kind of nice soft material and armrest over here as well. One thing I wish we could get was retractable sunshades back here built in at this price point, but you don't get them. These seats do not slide forward and backwards, but they do recline a pretty good amount. And this is pretty comfy, especially with this panoramic roof. All right, y'all, let's get going in this Ford Edge. Now, when you get a vehicle like this, if you want something fun, you can still get it with the Ford Edge ST. But most of you are gonna be looking for something practical, efficient, comfortable, and just easy to live with on a daily basis and haul a family around. And I think the Ford Edge is gonna do a good job at that. I'll talk about the ride comfort, some of the acceleration, what it's like to drive the turbocharged engine here, uh, and what it's like to then live with, and what it's like to live with on a daily basis. So first impressions this is not my first time driving a ford edge i've been able to drive this for about a week now and i had one uh, for 2019 as well for a short period of time and it's about average in most regards so i'll kind of touch on that in a little bit ride comfort is good it is comfortable without being harsh especially with these 20 inch wheels i'm a little bit surprised by that this first road we're about to get on has quite a bit of broken pavement some bumpiness and it kind of gets the body moving a little bit more. And going over a few of those bumps, it soothes them out really well. To to the way, you know, to the point to where it's just not intrusive, it's not disruptive in here. You can feel it, but overall the edge is comfortable with its ride quality. A note on the steering is that the steering weight isn't too heavy it's not laborious but it's also not like you know a pinky you can blow on the steering wheel and it's gonna move it's got a little bit of heft to it 
it's probably about the preferred amount of steering weight and heaviness that most drivers are going to want in this class. And now let's go ahead and get on it. Front wheel drive. And one thing that I've noticed is that this eight speed transmission seems to be more responsive than the 10 speed has been in the other Ford and Lincoln products that I've been in. It's mainly Ford products that I've been in. Um, for whatever reason, they probably could maybe get an extra mile per gallon if they put that 10 speed in here, but this eight speed has been sufficient. There's a couple times where I feel a little shudder, um, which is kind of almost commonplace now with modern transmissions, and it possibly is a learning transmission to where it will get smoother and better. Um, the longer that you drive it. Now I just put it in sport mode, see if it's a little sportier, pedal down. And it gets you up to speed pretty quick. Now it's obviously not meant for that, but the edge holds its own in terms of its um, speed and quickness. Now. As far as handling, there is a little bit of body lean, but it's not bad. It's about what you would expect in this class, honestly. Still in sport mode, little bit of throttle. And there's a little bit of push, not a whole lot. One thing about driving a turbocharged engine is that you don't have to put a lot of pedal down in order to get some acceleration. So. I, I prefer naturally aspirated engines over turbos, but I think a lot of you, if you don't pay a lot of attention to that, uh, many of the people that are gonna buy the Ford Edge and are shopping for these types of vehicles, it's not a huge emphasis. You can put a little bit of pedal down and it really makes for pretty effortless city driving. For example, you just kind of pull out onto a road, a little bit of throttle and it gets you up to speed pretty quick. Now road noise in here has been pretty good. Wind noise is also good. Every model is gonna give you an acoustic laminated front windshield. And I'm not sure if all models give you that on the side, but our model has that as you'd expect with the Titanium Elite. This is double pane glass, so it's gonna help suppress some wind noise. And now we're getting on a rougher textured road that brings in more road noise. And I don't, I'm using a different microphone. I'm not using the binaural audio because that really kind of blows up this road noise. So this is probably a little more realistic. Um, it's, it lets in some noise on this road, but it's actually not that bad compared to some vehicles. Definitely quieter than the Ford Escape. Probably pretty similar to the Explorer, but the Escape, the new Escape was actually louder than I thought. But this Ford Edge is right on par with what you'd expect and a little quieter than I thought on some road surfaces. So wind noise and road noise is pretty good in this Ford Edge. On a daily basis driving it, I love all the little cubby space in here. When I've got stuff with my family and my kid, and just little things to put here and there, or get off work and I just need to put something somewhere, it's got you covered. I'm not a fan of the touchscreen. It works just fine, I mean, it's okay. Um, it's in other Ford products, but I prefer a different setup. I prefer a different design, but it just works it's just not ideal so comfort wise i've been very comfortable in here seats are comfy i love the ventilated seats heated steering wheel heated seats everything works well but let's go ahead and wrap things up on this ford edge now to wrap things up on this 2020 ford edge they just made some mild changes and even got rid of a couple things depending on the trim level but for your money i think the sweet spot is definitely with the SE L trim. That's kind of the mid grade. The base is the SE. Then you can go for the performance oriented ST if you want. This Titanium Elite offers quite a bit, but it's just not quite nice enough for that mid $40,000 price tag, in my opinion. With that being said, I thought that this was a very practical SUV to live with. I love the space, the cubbies, and it's just easy to drive around town with this turbocharged engine. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think of the Ford Edge. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for weekly videos and give it a thumbs up if you liked the video. Have a great day.